Hello and welcome back. It's time for another Before You Buy, a video where I give you five reasons why you should consider buying a One Bay NAS and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. One Bay NASs are a constant perplexing thing to me. Whenever I look at data storage solutions from the big to the small to the incredibly nefarious behind me, a lot of the time the advantages of them are pretty clear, but in the case of One Bay NAS solutions, they are something that for a long time everyone kind of looked at like, what a waste of goddamn time that is. But ultimately when it comes down to it, the way these things have evolved over the last few years, and particularly now recording this in 2021, One Bay solutions have actually got to a point in terms of their hardware architecture and the way they've been scaled against their bigger brothers and sisters where they're actually quite viable though they're not perfect so let's get straight into the five reasons why i think you should get one number one it's the most obvious they are cheap as chips mate when it comes down to it one bay nasses are by far the most affordable when you go back year after year after year after year and you look at all of the different ranges and solutions where they have a multifaceted one two four six and eight bay you will always find that the one bay solution is not just cheaper because of its scale but it's cheaper in almost every single way a lot of one bay nasses even the most powerful ones can be picked up for about 150 to maybe 200 quid at the very 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 outside and the durability of one bay nasses particularly because they can run the majority if not all in very few cases i should add of all of the applications available from sonology qnap and more I mean that one bay nazis are actually very very good value they're by far the best value by no means but in terms of one bay what you're getting for your money you're actually getting a decent amount of wallop for one bay nazis so in terms of price yum yum Another reason to consider One Bay NAS is particularly in 2021, 2022, is the architecture inside them, particularly those CPUs, are actually aren't just better than they've ever been, but they've genuinely been the sort of stuff that you find on Bigger Brother NASs there. And one of the biggest thanks to that, uh, thank yous for that, is AIM 64-bit process. Whether you're Marvell and Apuna and of course Realtek, they have started developing CPUs that are ARM in architecture and ARM or ARM processors. These are processors designed to compress instructions given to the CPU that are delivered throughout the system as easily and efficiently as possible. They use much, much less power and they can get the job done with fewer resources. Now, that a lot of this is thanks to tablets and phones and portable devices the world over needing to work for as long as possible while consuming as little battery life as possible. The innovations that have been made possible in ARM processors have meant that one base with their very, very low power consumption internally and indeed with external PSUs that can all too often be built into the plug result in getting away with great hardware architecture in that CPU inside and even take advantage of DDR4 memory and in some cases scalability of that memory. Next up, it's not only about the internal specifications, the external specifications of One Bay NASs have improved and in one very, very important way. In the case of a lot of releases of One Bays in the last year or so, and this unfortunately is not an example, some One Bays have started arriving with 2.5 GBE, or the ability to add an adapter that increases their 1 gigabit Ethernet to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Now, why is that important? Well, 1 GBE, which is in the case of this NAS here on the rear there, allows you up to a maximum of around 100 to 109 megabytes per second there. However, 2.5 GBE allows somewhere between 250 to 270 megabytes per second there. The result is that traditional hard drives, although there's only one drive inside there, won't be bottlenecked as it will be on this. For example, this one bay inside here, if I open it up, this has got a WD Ultra Star inside. I do not recommend that for a one bay. However, that um, Western Digital Ultrastar drive can provide around 260 megabytes per second. That means if this was running, you would be instantly slicing the performance of that drive externally accessible by more than half. But in a lot of more modern one bay NASs that have come out in the last year, such as some of the QNAP series and the 131 series, and more the P and the K and stuff like that, 
The result is that that one bay with its a potential 250, 260, maybe even 270 megabytes per second external connection or upgradability with the adapter means that the drive isn't being bottlenecked and that's a vast amount of performance bandwidth inc increase that can be shared by your connected users. Next up, one of the biggest downfalls of one base that I think is less of a threat these days is the fact that although there's no RAID available on these, RAID have done an array of independent disks where you've got multiple drives that are all clubbed together for increased performance and a safety net, although it's not present at all on one base, there are so, so many different inherently available backup and synchronization and redundancy tools built into these that are worth highlighting. So for example, you have the likes of USB software backups where you can attach a large USB drive to have a backup running every now and then or constantly synchronized. You can take advantage of cloud backups with a number of cloud synchronization and backup tools built into Synology, QNAP, Acer Store, NASIS, and more. On top of that, you've got snapshots and real-time remote replication, the former of which allows you to take image screenshots for a time-managed restoration of your data internally. And then you have got um, uh, RTRR, real-time remote replication, and backing up via rsync to another server off-site that allows you to have data backed up elsewhere. And although the majority of these are more backup than they are redundancy, the synchronization options that can be done live within these systems, even on ARM processors, means that the lack of RAID configuration and support on a one bay is no longer the end of the world. Finally, a bigger advantage of one base that I think gets truer every single year is there was a time where a one bay NAS was an instant bottleneck in terms of your overall capacity. However, in the case of modern one bay NASs, because hard drives are getting so darn large, I mean, right now we are looking at 20 terabyte hard drives at the time of recording this video on a SATA connection. The result is that this one bay can have an enormous amount of storage capacity built into it when just a handful of years ago, you know, five, six years ago, you were massively bottlenecking your overall storage potential over the years in a one base, something that's just not true now. However, it's not all good news. And of course, there are five reasons why you shouldn't really look at a one bay or that one bays are just not great in the long term. Number one is probably the most obvious, a complete lack of scalability. One Bay's even now in 2021, despite the fact that, you know, they're being sold as a single drive system, the scalability and adding of expansions to One Bay's is virtually naught in 2021. There are kind of things you can do, like with the likes of QNAP's TR series, a hardware RAID and there's some J-Bob ones that you can attach via USB, but they still run as parallel storage rather than scalability where you look at your hard drive there the space that you're looking at and maybe you want to use an expansion to increase that single pool of storage where all the shares that you have and all of those links to that storage via the network or via the internet don't need to change unfortunately one base and their scalability with expansions is still virtually zero in 2021 and it's a big big downfall that when you buy a one bay you are buying a low glass ceiling you are buying a device that if you intend to go continue down this road for years and years you're going to have to upgrade in its entirety relatively soon Next up, for all of my praise of a recent ARM or ARM based processors in the last few years, particularly in one base, it has to be said that I still don't know of any one bay NAS that uses a lovely x86 64 bit processor from the likes of AMD or Intel. They all seemingly utilize, at least at the time of recording, ARM based processors, which again is great but it means you lack a lot of transcoding abilities, you lack a lot of the visual handling of an HDMI out, you lose a lot of the capabilities that just have too large an instruction that the ARM-based processor is able to compress and get away with with less power. So again, bear that in mind. The CPUs that you get in the likes of the 920 series, the Locker Store series, the QNAP Turbo NAS, the Visual Series NASes, they're not going to be possible here. Number three, it's got to be said that despite the fact that I said there is still lots of USB access, cloud-based access and synchronization and backups, 
the lack of raid even now in 2021 is always going to be better every other option i've mentioned there even with the most live synchronization will never be as pinpoint current in terms of robust redundancy as raid and one base and their lack of raid always has to be a deciding factor i don't just mean that you know you've got two drives inside a nas and one dies and then you know raid means that your data is still safe i am talking about when data is being live accessed on the nas for home or business users if you've got raid it means that one of your drives can die and those pathways those channels those shares those links they're still live yes the performance will drop until you introduce another drive on a two or a four bay or whatever but they're still live in the case of a one bay because of its lack of raid even though it has all of those synchronization and backup options, if that drive dies, you've got the data, but the entire operating system is kaputski because all of the system is running from that drive. And if it's gone, you're going to have to spend ages rerouting and reconnecting all of the data that you've synchronized off site, be it that you're sharing links to that data as alternatives or installing a new drive, doing the whole OS, OS in, and reconnecting all of those. The downtime can go from hours to days to weeks, depending on your setup. So again, RAID isn't the be or end all the one bay, but it has to be said, its lack of is still an enormous choosing factor. And I would still say a big negative of buying one bays. Next up, this is another kind of slightly undermining point to some of my positives, but it's worth talking about. Once you move away from what I would class as the default services, cloud synchronization, local backups, DLNA streaming. Once you move away from those and into things like transcoding, Plex Media Server, containers, virtualization, you know, that kind of thing, even really light AI stuff, you will find a one bay quite poor. It will either do the job utilizing way, 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 way more of its resource that it needs to, or worse still, will not support them at all. So do bear in mind that one base, once you move outside of the radius of default and acceptable standard apps, then you're going to have a real bumpy road. And the final point, again, counteracting my point about the fact that one base allow you to use bigger hard drives and not have to worry too much about there being a lower glass ceiling in terms of your overall capacity, it is worth highlighting that larger hard drives have another inherent problem that's worth touching on. Now, the reason I put a WD drive inside this NAS was to demonstrate the point that more enterprise level hard drives in terms of capacity, which is basically anything above 8 TB, are noisy. They make more clips, clicks, hums, whirs during spin up, during read and write activities. Indeed, just out of shot of this video, I've got a two bay NAS over there with two of these drives inside that has been click humming and whirring for about three days while it's been running very light operations. That's because these drives make more noise and in a one bay for more longevity in your capacity, the result is gonna be that you're gonna have to go for bigger drives, ergo, they're gonna make more noise. And if you are a bit sensitive to the click hum whirs and vibration of electronic stuff, it may irritate you so bear in mind that a one bay is going to go down that road but this has been my before you buy on one bay nas i really help i hope it helps you choose the right device for your needs if you've enjoyed the video click like if you want to learn more click subscribe and of course visit the free advice section over on nas compares we keep it updated we do not charge it, we don't do anything with your email. It's completely unbiased and it's manned by two humans, me and Eddie the web guy. We will answer your questions and help you get the right story solution you need. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.